Hey guys, we have a great show for you today, including news, a top 10 Netflix shows list, and even how to make pesto. Stick with us. Hey guys, welcome back to the morning after. Tara, how was your weekend? <laughs> it was the same as your weekend, Kim. <laughs> Actually, we went to Comic Con in New York over the weekend. Yes, we did. <laughs> Probably the best thing ever. I mean, oh my god, it was great. Maybe the best day of my life? I don't know. I mean, like next to my birth, I guess. As of right it was now. Kim's birth, <laughs> New York City Comic Con. The rest is the still rest to of come. the days. <laughs> It was so the rest cool. to be determined. Well, what was your favorite part? I don't know. I mean, the costumes. Okay, people, if you ever decide to go, either dress up, like go all out or don't dress up. Don't be like in between yeah. and asking it. Just either dress up or don't. Yeah, you know I, mean? I went very in between. Yeah. Like, I like dressed up, but I wore like clothes that I already had. Yeah. Like, just yeah. kind of threw something together and I was like, oh, I'm Dean Winchester, whatever. Yeah. But like, people go all out seriously like some of the things well, what was there's one what girl who dressed as like daenerys targaryen from game of thrones there were so many daenerys she targaryens had an actual basically like a dragon <laughs> on her back no my favorite group was that group of like 13 people just all dressed as ghostbusters <laughs> they had their packs they had like light up packs. oh my god that was one of the coolest ones the power rangers the power rangers the whole were cool. power rangers crew was there that was me mm -hmm. um the guy dressed as what was it He's a really tall dude with a chicken bucket. Oh, the hound. The hound, yeah. His costume was amazing. From Game of Thrones. Yeah. Well, it was just like, there's something for everyone there. And then Kim's just... something was when we ran into Bumblebee. Oh, my God. The Transformer. It's a big deal for me, OK? I'm a big fan. <laughs> we got a picture, and Kim's face is just like, like ecstatic to be <laughs> with him. I was so happy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. I just saw I looked You're just like, like, oh, my God. I started screaming. I just sprinted for him. It, one he, of Kim's two freakouts of the Comic Con. Yeah, I The had, other one is when she caught a glimpse of Stephen Amell. From Arrow. He's just one of my personal she, heroes. <laughs> she really lost it. I did. A she little lost bit, her guys. cool. I did. I lost After my After cool. lecturing me and Megan over. Don't be weird. Don't be weird when we rule. met someone else. All right, oh, so man. we're going to kick it over to news <laughs> with Stephanie. Steph, what you got for us? Hi, it's Stephanie and I'm here with your news update. Just two weeks after coming to America to visit family, Thomas Eric Duncan has died from Ebola. When Duncan experienced symptoms, he went right to Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital to be checked out. The hospital checked him out where they said in a statement he had low grade fever and abdominal pain. Of all the tests he went under, he was never tested for Ebola. Duncan left the hospital after being antibiotics and pain relievers. Ebola has a 2 to 21 day incubation period, so it is possible he was infected before coming to America. Before boarding the plane, passengers were screened four times where their temperatures were taken at each stop. After a patient has died, Ebola is still alive. The virus can be still, still be spread through contact of bodily fluids. Texas Health officials say Duncan's body will be cremated. According to Duncan's half-brother, he came to America to visit his son and his son's mother in Dallas. This was his first trip to America. In Arizona, a man has died after being stung more than an estimated 100 times. When the fire department responded to the call, they saw that an estimated 800,000 bees have attacked five people. The fire chief says that the exterminator had found a three foot by eight foot hive outside the house. So listen to this. A four year old brought 249 packets of heroin to her daycare and handed them out to her classmates thinking they were candy. The girl's mother had given her the backpack with the drugs after hers had been ruined by her pet. The 30-year-old mother has been charged with maintaining a drug property and three counts of endangering the welfare of a child. That's all I have for you today. Have a great week. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. Man. Weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. All right. First of all, I think Ebola is terrible, but I feel like it's spreading because people aren't following protocols. Yeah. It's the worst disease ever. Follow protocol like, for really it. Really just, just be by the book with By it. the book. That's just my opinion on things. No, throwing out wild tactics it's not, here. Yeah, it's not like a mild case of the flu, like it's Ebola. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Anyway, did you hear about 
In, Oni in Indonesia, they mm -hmm. found 40,000 year old human handprints in a cave. It's so cool, How right? How cool is that? Like, the pic it's literally the pictures are just like hands like all over the place and they're human hands, which is freaky because it was 40,000 years ago. Yeah. So they were very freshly evolved humans. That's what I, mean, I read. They were new humans. They were like new humans. Humans, <laughs> you know, homo sapiens were pretty new. So that's crazy. It's like, the new species, yeah. homo sapiens. Taking an archaeology class, so I'm just like pumped up about humans and 40,000 year old things like Is that friends. when they like came out humans? <laughs> Yes, that's when they came out as humans. When they like They're evolved like, this into is humans. Me. I'm a human. Either way, the handprints are a big <laughs> you know deal because I mean. they've never found like actual like painting wise stuff that old uh -huh. or just human evidence that clear that old, you know what I mean? Yeah, and well, it's really cool. And you said they're really like defined, very right? Very defined, yeah. There's one, it's got like a whole guy's arm and his print. Oh man. Is, crazy and that's they're like awesome. layered they were doing it over like spans of hundreds of years in this cave oh, that was just the thing they did these they're humans like, are just like yeah i got some paint you guys made some handprints and they're like yeah <laughs> these handprints are so fun they're putting handprints everybody everywhere. touched the wall i don't know i just find that very that one guy put his arm in they're like oh i just wanted hands buddy Jim, get your Jim. arm out of me he's like i thought it was cool <laughs> we well, said it was handprints why are you putting your arm in God. jim jim the caveman <laughs> I should, he ruined it for everybody I'll else. Rewrite the article and be like, side note, we've <laughs> discovered the arm in the in the picture is of Jim. Jim the caveman who did not follow protocol properly. More people not following proper protocol. You spread diseases and you mess up handprint displays. Art. Yeah, art displays. For people cave. forty thousand years in the future. <laughs> Sacred. They're like, man, this would have been really cool if that guy's arm wasn't in it. How awesome would this have been? <laughs> They're like, we had a system, a specific <laughs> hand hands system in a hand print. This guy's like, not Aah. extension arm prints. Might as well put your face in it next. That would have been cool though. What if there was a face? It'd be face? Sweet. I mean, they haven't looked that far yet. I think there could be one. I hope they find one. Someone, it's probably Jim's face. Someone had Jim would try. Jim it. went rogue with this art project. He would try. It. He just went all out. He'd put the paint on his face and be like, let me just. Let me just stick Smash. that in there. He'd do it. Jim, <laughs> the cave man. It's gotten out of hand. <laughs> this has gotten out of, we've moved way past it, what we wanted really to talk has. about. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump over to Michael now with how to make pesto. Mike, what you got? Thanks, guys. Mike Delgado here. And one of my favorite things in the world is pesto. Pesto on pasta, pesto on pizza, pesto on sandwiches, pesto on everything. It's just good on anything and everything. So let's get started. To start out, you're going to need about two cups, loosely, of basil leaves. We're going to throw those into the food processor. Then you're going to need about two to three cloves of garlic. Personally, I like as much garlic as I can put in there. And then you're going to need about a dash of salt. That's good. And some olive oil. How much olive oil? Well, it depends on how thick or thin you want your pesto to be. Adding more will make the pesto a little thinner. You could also add things like pine nuts and uh, Parmesan cheese or pepper, but those things are optional. Traditionally, pesto is served with pine nuts and Parmesan cheese to make it a little bit thick and creamy. So I'm just going to add a little bit more olive oil in here. The only thing, the only piece of equipment that you're going to need is a food processor. So you just put everything into the food processor. Give it a couple pulses. Then you can turn it on. And there we go. Whoops. This amount of pesto here is good for about a pound of pasta. And it just smells so nice and fresh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go find some pizza to put this on. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Mike. I love pesto. Oh, I love a good it's, pesto. Oh, man. My roommate makes a mean pesto. Does she? Yeah, I can't the, make pesto. That's no, why yeah, I'm I can't excited either. I can't. that I now know how. We've learned. Very important. I'm not a chef, so no. I don't know how to make not anything. Not a chef, not yet a woman. You know. I can put, like, chicken on the grill, which yeah. is about how far I get. That's a, it's a good start, I suppose. I do okay. Yeah, okay. I do okay. <laughs> Okay. What anyway, you, Kim. Yeah, what do you have? Did you hear this woman? What did this she woman She proposed do? to herself because I guess she just 
She's couldn't take take the loneliness anymore? I mean, girl power in a way. I mean, on the bright side, though, she did say yes. Thank so. goodness. What if she had said no to her own proposal? She's like, oh my god, will you marry me? No. no. Okay. And people at all watch. Even and I don't, don't want me. She, like, threw a flash mob for herself to propose, and then... She, she basically just went, like, herself. I'll just marry myself. Yeah. I mean, in a way, that's, like, the ideal arrangement. You don't... I mean, she's never... You can't. I hope they don't get divorced. Yeah. How bad can the arguments get? Someone's got to win, and it's always the same person, right? I mean... They'll be good. Yeah. There's no, like, honey, what are we having for dinner tonight? Oh, pasta. Yeah, pasta. You know what I mean? No <laughs> it's arguments true. over that. There's got to be... It seems kind of ideal. Yeah. I mean... I mean, I'm sure the, her family is probably a little... I bet they're very happy. Yeah, they're happy. She, she put a ring like, on oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> on her own finger. She took She care liked of. it, and she put a ring on yeah. it. Yeah, I hope she, like, told her mother, Mom, I'm like, getting Mom, married. Mom, I'm getting married. Who are you getting married to? Me. <laughs> Me. Me. My I'm going to marry would. myself. I mean, it's not a horrible idea, though. At the end of the day... It's true. The more you think about it. The more I think about it, the more I'm like. I'm going to keep this idea in my back pocket yeah. just in case. Put a pin in it. For later. Put a pin in it for later. Maybe. If things don't get better. You know, now at least I know I won't be the first person to have done that. That's true. It could be a trend by the time I consider doing it. Everyone's marrying themselves. Yeah. It would be like. By the time we do. New American trend, women marrying themselves. That way they get marital status. I don't know the benefits of that, but clearly she saw some. I can't believe she proposed to herself. I, I'm sure if I met her, I would understand why she did. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know like I feel like they're like, oh, like, Jenny proposed to herself. Be like, that yeah, her friends are friends. Right. Are yeah, her friends are like, yeah, we she, get it. She probably did. <laughs> she probably did. Yeah. We totally believe that. We totally believe her. There was no like, what? Jenny. No, that couldn't have happened. They were just like, mm-hmm, that makes sense. <laughs> She's she's marrying herself. When's the wedding? In the spring. Okay. She likes flowers. Yeah. She's. she's it's gonna be in a garden. She's gonna walk down the aisle to herself. <laughs> Poor Jenny. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're gonna kick it to Tyrell with our fat pack. Tyrell, what do you have for us today? Good morning, Quinnipiac University. Tyrell Martin here, and I gotta know what is the fattest thing that you've ever done. Let me start off by telling you my story. So about five years ago, I went to Six Flags, and for all that know, they have the concession stands inside the rides. And that day, they were selling churros. So let's just say that day, I ended up riding the Superman ride seven times just to get a churro every time I got on the ride. So now I want to know, what's the fattest thing that you guys have ever done? Let's go walk around and find out. So what was the fattest thing that you've ever done? The fattest thing I have ever done was eat a large bag of Hershey almonds with kisses in it ate half a pound of burger and went on this uh, it's like an amusement park where you go inside and there's all mirrors around you have to maze your way and get out of it so uh, had a little too much to eat got nauseous all the mirrors did not help me out and I just yacked inside I got a giant thing of kettle corn that was almost the bag was almost as big as my body I mean I'm five foot two but <laughs> still that's a lot of popcorn and that was gone that night so I went to bar on like a Thursday, not even a Saturday, so that was pretty random too. Uh, and I got dared to eat the entire pizza that we ordered. Um, we ordered a large mashed potato and bacon pizza. So I did it, and then I was still hungry, so I had half of the large bacon pizza we got on top of it. I one time stole my mom's BJ's wholesale uh, card, membership card, and I bought those big box of Oreos with like the six sleeves of Oreos in them. And I started with one, and I just kept going, and before I knew, I was done with a box and a whole gallon of milk. I don't think I've ever told anyone about that before. And how did you feel after? I actually wanted more. Oh, I was full and satiated. He had to drive home. I couldn't. I was like, passed out. <laughs> like, why did you want to eat that many Oreos and drink that much milk? Yeah, I mean, I, I asked like the love of my life out on a date, and she, she crushed my heart and didn't even consider and I knew, you know, Oreos will never break my heart, so. Uh, I went to bed, and I shouldn't have. I probably should have gone to the bathroom first. Woke up and had the worst stomach cramps. And then I had to fly on an airplane to Florida later that day. So the next time I go to an amusement park, just don't eat any burgers? Don't eat anything if you plan on becoming very confused and sense of where you are. <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate it. But at the time, eating them was really exactly what I needed. And I'll never forget that day. It's all good, man. We all been there. Come here. Bring it in. Bring it in, man. I really do. 
do it for the Oreos. Yeah, do it for the Oreos. <laughs> all right. We're well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for participating. And remember, if you're going to experience your fattest day, just know, be prepared with Pepto-Bismol and some Tums. Back to you guys in the piazza. Thanks, Tyrell. Well, we have more fun topics coming up after we take a quick commercial break, so stick around. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Wake up, Quinnipiac! It's the morning after! Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Yes. Kara. Mm hmm. Elle magazine. This is interesting. All right. I'm, I'm right. actually going to start with Let this. Me just okay, Kara. Brace myself. You know what a Timberland is, right? The yeah, shoe? Yeah, Timberland boots. Yeah. How long have you known they've existed? My whole life, since day one, probably. Since birth. Since birth. I literally came yeah. out, I was like wearing Timberlands. Basically. Yeah, me, me too. The same. The doctor the same. had them on. But yeah. Every, they've been around forever. Every man in my life has at one point had Timberlands. Yeah. Well, Elle magazine. Uh, posted an interesting article about Timberlands, mm -hmm. <laughs> claiming that they were the L magazine discovered the Timberlands this year, like like 2014 yes. this year. That it was a new trend this year. That's not right. That's correct. <laughs> you are you are. Correct. I'm right in that it's not right. Yes, exactly. L magazine, which is a pretty fashion aware yeah magazine, very, very credible fashion yeah. magazine i would say of like of all the fashion items that that's the equivalent of them saying like scrunchies existed in the 1980s you know what i mean yeah it, it, there's a new trend this year it's scrunchies yeah and like weren't those the new trend of chokers yeah well the the, the fact that they just pretended that Timberlands hadn't been being worn. We just discovered the little bag. minimum of 15 <laughs> years. They're like, wow, yeah. this new shoe. There's a guy on the quad right now wearing, I'm sorry. New oh, shoe yeah, he is. coming out. He's probably had them for years and years and years. How ahead of the trends is he? Seriously, he's doing it right. We should go out there and be like, sir, do you sir, know how fashionable how long, you are? How long have you had your Timberland boots? It'll be like six years. Ooh. We'll be like, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Good. Good Seriously, answer. They had like Kim Kardashian and Kanye wearing Timberlands, and it was like they've had those forever. They found those in the back of their Seriously. closet, probably. Literally, they were like babies are wearing Timberlands. My niece, who was born like five years ago, had Timberlands when she was a baby. So I mean, Aww. it's happening That's for a so while. Cute. Um, it is cute. It Her really niece is. is cute. She is cute. Thank you very much. But right. yeah, like, <laughs> but the Timberland boots. Why, Elle magazine? <laughs> Like they it's should be. So weird. I, I expect better. That's all I'm I saying. Know. I mean, seriously. I know. All right. Well, speaking of things <laughs> that are entertaining, let's hear more entertainment mo news from Kelly. Kelly, what you got? Hi. This is Kelly Ledwith with this week's entertainment update. Real Housewives of New Jersey star Teresa and her husband Joe Giudice both have been sentenced to jail time. Teresa will head behind bars for a 15-month sentence on January 5th, 2015. Joe will then spend 41 months in jail when she is released and also faces possible deportation after his sentence. It is a sad situation for that whole family and I hope their daughter's the best. Paula Patton has officially filed for from divorce from Robin Thicke. They announced their separation eight months ago after nine years of marriage. I guess Robin Thicke's attempt to win her back through an entire album just wasn't enough. Seventh Heaven star Stephen Collin has reportedly confessed to, confessed to molesting underage girls in a secret audio recording from a therapy session with his estranged ex-wife. He has been cut from a reprising role on the show Scandal, and NYPD is currently investigating the issue. On a brighter note, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds have announced they're expecting their first child. She shared a picture of her baby bump on her website, Preserve.com, on Monday. All I can say is that is going to be the world's cutest baby. Back to you guys. 
All right, thanks, Kelly. Thank you very much. So, Kim. What? I'm sure you've heard all the buzz over American Horror Story Freak Show. The show I'm too afraid to watch. I watched it. Mm -hmm. It was excellent. Was it? I thought. I know people that either like loved it or didn't really like it at mm -hmm. all. It's a I loved yeah. it. I thought it was creepy. I know there's a lot of hype for this season. There was that's a, a ton very ton of hype. Interesting. I feel like um, a lot of people are theme. like, yeah, like a lot of people are afraid of like clowns and stuff like that. Clowns. Yeah, and like the main villain in the show is like this terrifying clown, which was terrifying. genuinely creepy. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like. I was like fine clowns. though. Like he would like break into people's houses and be like stabbing them, and I was like, I was like cool during that part. There was one part of the show where he was like kicking cages filled with children, and I was like, mm -mm, nope. I don't Not like about that, that life. I, I don't. I mean, I've understood the enjoyment of American Horror Story. I really mm -hmm. have. I know the first season. I almost watched it, but then people told me things that were happening in the first season. I was like. <laughs> That. Like maybe not. Second season, once again, almost watched it. Then people told me what was happening. <laughs> Didn't want to watch that third season once again. The third almost. season was bad. You could have handled the third season. Okay, scary. that's good. But um, yeah, this no. season I heard about the clowns. I was like, I guess I'm not yeah. watching that either. Then cool. it's really cool. This season's actually Jessica Lange's last season. Really? Yeah, which is Ooh, really sad. That's sad. Because she's. I feel like she's like the face of it. Like she's. She like, is. She's been like the head of every yeah. season so far. Really. So She's it's gonna queen. be it's gonna be weird to see what they do next year, but we get to enjoy her for one more season, yeah. so that's good news. Didn't kind of don't most of the actors come back? Sort yeah, of? and th they're all um, they all usually come back. Some don't, and some do. Have it new um, characters. Which yeah, is cool. and they just do new characters because yeah. it's new seasons every yeah. every year. We which say it was is like cool. mini series sort yeah, of. It's more of like a mini series, yeah. yeah. That's cool because they switch up like it's a completely different show. Yeah, that's cool. Year to year. Too scary for me, but cool. I mean, I shouldn't talk. I oh, watch, it's so cool. And they cast, like, Dead, real so. people in it with, like, deformities and stuff as, like, the freaks of the show. Oh, oh it's great. I yeah. was watching interviews with them, and they're all just so excited to, like, be acting and stuff. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. <laughs> I don't know why it was funny either, but it was it is, it's adorable. adorable. I don't know. Did, it's did great. you watch The Walking Dead last night? I mean, there's, like, mm -hmm. I shouldn't. I don't know why I'm afraid to watch American Horror Story when there's, like, face eating like zombies eating people's yeah, faces I think, every I think you episode. could handle it and yet I'm like just like watching that calmly I don't yeah. understand the Megan Horror Story is more like messed up stuff like that yeah. and you're so like maybe oh that's the problem. you're like I don't know about this yeah zombies I'm like oh this is a run of the mill thing it's I can fine it's just zombies eating I'm, everyone's faces I'm, I'm just very used to this so I don't know what you know is going on all right so now that we've talked about new shows, let's find out the top 10 shows to binge watch on Netflix with Andrew. Andrew, what you got? Thanks, guys. So everybody loves to binge watch TV shows on Netflix. Am I right? We all have our favorite shows. But what happens when the show is over? You could wait around for the next season to be released. But who has time to wait? I've done you all a little favor and found the top 10 most binge watchable shows streaming on Netflix. Number 10, Cheers. Now I know what you guys are thinking. That show is ancient but it's a classic and ran for 11 seasons. The comedic show is set in a bar, and who doesn't want to hang out in a bar where everybody knows your name? Definitely one to add to your list. Number nine, Lost. Basically, a plane crashes and leaves its passenger stranded on a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. Rough day for everybody on that plane. As the show progresses, the audiences get hooked, but slightly lost. Number eight, The Office. The workplace comedy follows the daily lives of its employees. Not my taste in television shows. Uh, the awkwardness of the characters makes me feel a little uncomfortable. But if you're an Office fan, you'll be pleased to know that both the US and the UK versions are available for streaming. Lucky number seven, Battlestar Galactica. I personally have never seen this show, but reading about it, it seems pretty entertaining. The sci-fi show takes place on the Galactica ship, and the crew has to fight off aliens and other obstacles throughout the series. Number six, Friday Night Lights. The football drama is not what you expect from a show that is centered around high school students. It's a very touching and heart-wrenching show, and yes, football is one of the main themes. Breaking in the top five, Orange is the New Black. This jailhouse comedy is the only Netflix original series that made the list. The story follows the struggles of the women in a minimum security prison. It's a must-watch for everybody. Number four, Mad Men. The drama transports the audience to a 1960s advertising agency. The fashion, liquor, and lack of technology all help set for a great TV drama. Number three, The West Wing. This White House drama portrays the, presidencies, the stories of the presidencies of Bush and Clinton. The show de depicts the inner workings of the White House on a daily basis. 
all while keeping the audience hooked with a bunch of drama. Number two, Arrested Development. Another awkward show that people seem to love. This show is good, so good, that it ended after three seasons and then Netflix brought it back. It's a fan favorite, so check it out. You won't regret it. Finally, lucky number one is Breaking Bad. Not only have the actors won countless awards for their performances on this show, the storyline is so incredibly written that it's become one of the best shows on television. The story follows the life of a chemistry teacher who uses his knowledge to produce and sell drugs. This is a must watch. I know it's first on my list. Thanks guys, back to you. Thanks Andrew, we'll be taking a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Wake up, Quinnipiac! It's the morning after! Welcome back. So Kara and I are here with Asia from Quote. Hi, how are Asia, you? Asia, welcome to the Thank show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thanks for joining us. Of course. So Asia, do you want to talk a little bit about Quote uh, for our viewers who don't know what the club is? Sure. So Quote is a poetry and spoken word club. It's primarily spoken word and poetry. Although if you have any other interests or any other talents, you can definitely join. Uh, Quote stands for Quinnipiac University Outreach to Expression, hence Quote. Mm -hmm. And um, originally the club was active on campus mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, but I guess the people that were members, they all graduated or they just stopped going. So uh, I've been doing poetry for a couple of years now. Oh, excuse me, a couple of years now. And um, I decided to start something on campus, but then I realized there was already something that was here. So what I did was I revised the constitution, mm -hmm. I got more members, I developed an e-board, and so we've been starting from there. Wow. So, I mean, you've been writing for a long time. Yeah. What what kind of stuff influences you personally as a writer? Well, I started writing to de-stress. So, <clears throat> in high school, I was going through like a lot of stresses, like college mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. transitioning from adolescence to like coming into my own adulthood. Mm -hmm. So then I started writing, and now I just really write about anything I feel. I write about hard times. I write about happy times. I, I write about love and laughter mm. and things that make me smile things that make other people smile inspiration okay do you guys i mean do you guys perform like what's your what are your goals for you guys yeah definitely we want to perform at mm -hmm. a lot of events um <clears throat> we want to hold coffee houses do you, you guys are aware of montage mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. um i want to reach out to them and oh, kind definitely. of get a partnership going so i have a we have a lot of big things and plan but you know yeah, we're that starting would be great. Off, so yeah. Yeah. do you have any favorite poets or uh no actually I don't just <laughs> writing to write just poetry yeah. it's great though yeah yeah it is um you definitely I mean you definitely should get in contact with some of the professors around campus because I know do you know Jason Koo he's he's the he's one of the heads of the uh, creative writing department I had him for poetry class he, oh yeah he does teach a poetry mm, class he's a mm -hmm. really great poet if he I don't know if he knows if you guys I've never met it. him but I've seen him on the registration yeah you should definitely <laughs> reach out to him or I mean are you planning on taking poetry classes I like, want to yeah I just okay. never fit into my schedule mm, but yeah, I'm no, planning on it for next semester so, are you English major I'm actually a political science major. Right on. Right yeah. On. Theater minor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so you've got the performance skills down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no stage fright for you, seriously. Mm -hmm. wow. So when are your meetings and everything, just if anyone wants to join? Um, if anyone wants to join, our meetings are on Wednesday nights, 9-15, Tater Hall 303. Okay. okay. Nice. Uh, what advice would you have for potential members, people who are maybe, maybe kind of shy to come out and join, but are writers or things like that? Um, I mean, if you're shy, if you like to write, if poetry may or may not be your thing, but you enjoy it, come anyways, because one of our mottos is we aspire to inspire. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're forced to write or you're forced to perform, because not mm -hmm. everybody is that type. But if you just like to sit there and just listen to what people have to say, and just take everything in, that is completely fine. 
we embrace everybody. So if you're a little shy, just come out and see what, see if you like it. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, do you like, uh, are you kind of more of a, a freestyle writer? You go for sonnets, you know, limericks, all that kind of stuff, haikus? Um, I'm more of an organic writer, so okay. whatever just comes to mind, I just write it down. Not really huge on rhyming just because it's hard to do and I hadn't really mm -hmm. mastered yeah. that skill mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. So whatever I feel, I just write it on paper and let it flow from there. And I'll mm -hmm. edit it to make it sound better, but I just write it all out first. All right. Well, thank That's you great. so much for sitting thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Please like us on Facebook. And if you would like to join the morning after, we meet Monday nights at 9.15 and Monday mornings at 9 a.m. in the piazza. Have a great week.